today's video we're going to get to drop into Kevin Nat Chriswell's wood shop his cabinet shop and see his super Polk workbench that's right it's the Polk workbench too with lots of his modifications and he has made it the central point of his shop it's kind of his main working area and he has sent me over a bunch of short videos talking about a lot of the features and I have put those all together into a seven minute video, which I'm going to roll here in just a minute. Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop, or at least the office of the Smart Wood Shop. Hey, I hope you're making the most of your time, your extra time that we all seem to have these days and getting caught up and getting things done around the house or in the shop. Building up those efficiencies that we've talked about over the years, this is the time to take advantage and get ready when we burst back out on the scene and, and go back to work. All right, let's jump over and see what Kevin has to say. I think you're gonna really enjoy this. Due to the shutdown, I'm in my shop doing a little bit of maintenance, and I thought I'd uh, use this time to show you some alterations I've made to my pulp workbench. You'll notice that I've covered the bench with Formica laminate, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, if I get any dried glue on the bench, it, it scrapes off very easily. And this, this has been on here over a year, and it's still almost like new. You notice it's all one piece um, because I mostly do cabinetry work. So this is my shop's main workbench. But if I ever do need to take it apart, it's simply a matter of taking my tracks off and just cutting it right down the middle. Second reason I use Formica is it's wet dry. So, you know, I always use pieces of paper or pieces of wood to write dimensions down on to cut, and I always lose that piece. So now I just write 9 and 7 16 20 and 1 half. I go ahead and I cut all the pieces. When I'm done, I can just wipe those numbers off. Lastly, there is a one-inch grid. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but this is one inch on center exactly. And it works really great when I'm gluing up cabinets, holding them perfectly square. And as you can see on these numbers, as I said, when you're done, you just wipe them off. I've installed electric outlets all the way around the bench, and I've run all those outlets into a mag switch. And what that does is allow me to plug the tool in anywhere and activate the vacuum. By the way, if you look on the vacuum here, I have a couple of blast gates, so I don't have to keep switching the hoses between tools. I've installed a storage area for my woodpecker super fence. It sits right here. I just pull this out whenever I'm using it, which is almost every day. And I slide it on, and then when I'm done, it goes right back in here. I've installed an Aper Master Lift, which I love, and it also has these mag plates, which are great. You simply pop them off, and I have a lot of different size plates, and then you just put it right back on. For joining face frames, I have I installed in the table a Craig clamp base. I simply put the clamp in there. I get my face frame material. I stick it together. Line it up. Clamp it. And then I install my screws. I watched your video on your crosscut jig and I was deciding on a way I could build that as an integral part of my table. And this is what I've come up with. Let me show you the components of that system. First of all, is this aluminum track I purchased. You can see how that's made. So you turn it 90 degrees. Lock it down, keep it straight. And you'll notice there is a tape measure along the top. One other thing I've done is I've got a sacrificial guide in the table. Simply push that out and I have replacements, but this will last a long time. What it does is it doesn't cut into your table. And if you take a look here, look at the table and you see that I cut a 14 degree um, bevel and that's what holds the guide in the table. So I simply slide that in and I'm good to go. On this end, I have a jig 
that holds the far end of the plywood at the proper height. Simply a hole with a, a peg fits down over the bench dog. And then I place my track. And I use these clips to hold it onto the bench dog. And the last part is installing the stop that I made. Now, when I install this, you'll see that this stop has a cursor that's adjustable. So I can move it and adjust it, and I've got to adjust it where the cut is exact now. So there you have it. It's simply a matter of taking your piece of material, sliding it under. Now your, your uh, fence or your track is very secure. Taking your saw and always checking your depth and then making your cut. And then when you're done, simply lift this up, pull the piece out and put your next piece, next piece in. I made adaptations for this system to cut large oversized pieces. Let me show you what they are. I made this extension for the track and you'll see I made a connector. It's just a piece of aluminum I cut on the table saw and put um, set screws in it. And I simply put that in there, slide it in. And of course, I would take the big track off and tighten the set screw, but it's seamless. It continues. I can cut almost an eight foot sheet. And then coming around here to make it wider, I have made this piece that simply uh, screws onto the side of the table and extends my track which allows me to cut 48-inch pieces. And finally, uh, I made some changes for when I'm using my long festal track. I put these pocket hole handles in the side of my table, and I pull those down. I make my cuts with the long track, and in between cuts, because of these woodpecker parallel guides, I don't want them hitting on the ground and damaging them. So I simply take my track, and I hang it on the handles for the pocket hole. Last thing, I have adapted my forces for my bench to have lumber holders. The original plan didn't have them, but I need all the storage I can get because of my small shop. So they've come in very handy. So that's it. Kind of a lot of changes, but again, I'm a cabinet maker and I've got this bench pretty much dialed in exactly uh, like I like it. The one last thing that I forgot is I have this track along my router table and it's got the quarter inch track for guides but also I have this one inch track and the reason I like that is when I'm doing edge banding I set my plywood up like that do my edge banding and I'm good to go. Hey, if you want to Thanks Ron. Shop, or tip, a technique, a jig or just your workflow put together a video and uh, get it to me through Google uh, Drive or Dropbox or one of those and uh, share it with me and I will um, see if I can put it together and put it up and share it with all of the subscribers here. I know we all love dropping in and see what's going on and see how everybody's using their little extra time these days. If you like these videos, give them a thumbs up, subscribe. Remember to ring the bell. It's the only way you'll know when I drop a new video. And come on over to our website, thesmartwoodshop.com, and use our store there, our Amazon affiliate links. Uh, they share a little bit with us without charging you any extra, and it helps support the channel. Thanks for dropping in. Have a great day.